Oh, hello everybody. It's just nice to have an invitation to respond to uh, a little theological discussion. So I uh, thought I'd come straight back and have a chat with Lucas uh, about his interesting theory about Elohim. And I don't entirely disagree with that. Uh, it's just nice to talk a little bit more um, delicately about the interpretation of scripture. So uh, let's have a look what Lucas says first. I'm always looking, looking at the original uh, temptation at the fall when Adam committed high treason against our Lord uh, when he listened to Eve and did as he shouldn't have been doing you will know that uh, the scripture says or the King James verse scripture says at one particular point that the the devil said to uh you know poo-pooing the idea you know satan came to uh, uh eve and said to her uh, oh yeah 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 you know that's right you should surely not die but uh, but god does know that you shall be that if you do this you know you shall be as gods and i thought hang on a minute this has never sat too comfortably with me you know how it is that we are spiritual people and you know by the spirit something isn't quite good enough because the scripture of course is written uh, not in English to start with because English didn't exist you know 1900 plus years ago when the canon of scripture was closed so at last we can begin to look a little more critically at the scriptures which is what Lucas is inviting us to do to think about the formation of the Christian canon and of course it wasn't uh, actually closed 1900 years ago it took the better part of 350 years to close the Christian scan canon but uh, nevertheless we'll take it from there so I had a little look at the original text and the original text said there what Satan said was Elohim doth know that you should be as Elohim so I noticed straight away that Lucas is referring to the Hebrew text of the Old Testament scriptures whereas the first thing to remember is that the early Christians wouldn't have gone to the Hebrew text of the scriptures not by the end of the first century anyway they would have gone to the common form of the of the Old Testament scriptures which was written in the common Greek language which was actually very very widely used throughout the Jewish community belong beyond Israel and the Holy Land and uh, so the early Christians used the Septuagint form of um, of Old Testament scripture and um, of course the word Elohim wouldn't have been used but the term Theos uh, God. Now in the past that you the script you know people would have said oh you should be as gods as the King James Bible renders that well that's not an unfair translation because Elohim uh, is the name of our God our Father but Okay, now Lucas is taking into a very interesting arena of biblical studies and, and uh, Old Testament discussion because we find in the Old Testament scriptures that there are actually several names for God Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh, uh, those are the three common ones uh, but the, ti the titles Elohim uh, and El Shaddai would have been borrowed from Canaanite religion uh, and it, in, if, in actual fact you've got, only got to think of all the different um, names in the Old Testament scriptures which uses reference to the to the term El so for example Israel, uh, Michael, Raphael, uh, Joel so many so many names in the Old Testament scriptures but it's rooted in the Old Test in the Canaanite um, name for God which is El uh, it could be singular or plural so of course any names uh, with the term El in it means somehow of God like Israel means he who wrestles with God it was the name given to Jacob uh, Michael means warrior of God Gabriel means messenger of God or any terms that have the name El in it within the biblical scriptures is a reference to of God but God is one person he's just tripartite three uh, he's not three separate persons he's one person but tripartite like human beings are we are spirit soul body he is father son holy spirit one person three parts okay well of course i part company with lucas at this point because lucas is getting himself into very deep water with his um, own doctrine of the trinity to say that um, god is only one person in three parts i mean uh, 
Uh, of course, that's not the traditional interpretation of the Trinity, but we'll ride with it away. I mean, the early Christians struggled with uh, how we understand uh, the three elements in the in the Godhead, and the best term they came up with was three persons equal in divinity, one God. Uh, but w so we'll just pass that over for the time being. You know, Elohim, which is plural, a plural word, just know that you shall be as Elohim. Now the King James Bible renders that be as gods. Hmm, not good enough. Not a good word. Sorry. You should really left it at Elohim. Just know that you should be as Elohim. Now the translators of the King James Bible would have struggled with this very subject themselves and they would have consulted not only the Hebrew manuscripts but the um, manuscripts of the Septuagint and this is how it would have seen to them. In other words, you should be like God, the same. Knowing good and evil. That you will be independent and be God like God. Now I don't detract from anything that Lucas is actually saying here except that he's touching on a very delicate and fragile um, phrase in the primitive pages of scriptures where, where the title for God is actually in the plural, Elohim, and that's the dilemma that the translators of the authorised Bible would have confronted themselves. So we th see in the, in the Greek texts that the writers of the Septuagint translation 150 years before Jesus who put the Hebrew scriptures into the common Greek language for Jews and anybody else to read far and wide throughout not just the Roman Empire but even across Persia and elsewhere where the Greek language was in common use. So the Septuagint translators carefully put the phrase Elohim into the plural Greek form and we see that clearly in the text above, host theoi. In other words, Adam and Eve will have their minds and their eyes opened and they will become as gods themselves. So the Septuagint reinforces the plural and I think the King James um, translators really had no choice but to do the same. But what he said to these people were, to, uh, to Eve, that you should be like God. And the unthinking woman, instead of immediately turning to her husband, and checking, she said uh, she went immediately and did as was, was tempted and tested, and then she went and gave it to Adam to eat. Okay, well, I guess we'll part company again with Lucas at this point because I don't think we can blame the woman any more than the man. This is the age old story of original sin, and part of the original sin is that nobody takes responsibility, and that's what the story is about. The man blames the woman, the woman blames a snake, whatever that is, and then Augustine, 400 year or, or 400 years into the Christian faith, um, associates the snake with the male reproductive order and it all gets turned into something much more sexual than it's intended to be but um, that's another story altogether but let's just uh, you know it's it's nice to have a theological discussion it's nice to look at the scriptures more critically and it's nice for to be invited to to share in um, a critical thought process as we look at the scriptures in a more intelligent way and I thank Lucas for that and God bless. Now I, I wonder what would have happened if he turned around and rebuked her sharply and, uh, and, and checked with God but he didn't. Did he? He made a mistake. Now in his naive state and his simplistic state of course one understands how he, he could make a mistake like that but nevertheless think about that you should be as God knowing good and evil interesting you should be the same as God and that was immediately insubordination wasn't it have a read of it and see what you think